हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अन अकेडमी इट्स मे ऋषिकेश इनामदार वेलकम्स यू ऑल इन टूडेज सेशन सो टूडे विल सी सोकार लेक यस नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर विल कवर ऑल डिटेल्स रिलेटेड टू दिस फोर्टी सेकेंड राम सर साइड सोकार लेक बिफोर दैट friends do not forget to enroll yourself for an academic combat scheduled on 20th february in the morning 11 am that is tomorrow morning yes enroll now using code rbi live again you can watch my special classes on an academy app yes welcome you welcome to you all on an academy platform where you will get daily live classes structured courses unlimited access for live and recorded classes along with unlimited mock test so you can evaluate yourself we 100 plus top educators will guide you throughout the pre preparation so download an academy learning app today and start your preparation it's me rishikesh inamdar having experience around 8 years in the field of guiding upsc aspirants you can follow me on an academy and you can join our telegram group using this link yes friends you can choose any of the course as per your requirement as we have 15000 plus courses on our platform yes you can start your upsc preparation with an academy using these courses like polity governance ir history current affairs indian economy geography science technology and many more yes you can opt for plus subscription and iconic subscription as well so do not forget to use code rbi live to get 10% discount on your subscription so this 10% discount is in february month only yes these are new batches we have started that is targeted for upsc csc 2021 prelims and for csc gs 2022 we have one year two years and ncert batches as well so please join the batches as per your convenience and we have combo subscription option as well like you can go with the plus upsc csc optional along with iconic for upsc csc gs and also you can go with the plus subscription option including gs and optional subjects Yes do not forget to use code RBI life to get 10% discount Yes friends these are the upcoming special classes available on an academy app so please enroll yourself for these special cla classes as well these these classes are completely free of cost Yes now we are going to start today's topic that is sokar lake yes friends now first of all we'll see the geographical position yes is aaj ke session mein dosto hum sokar lake ke bare mein padhenge all the details related sokar lake and ramsar ramsar sites as well yes friends now see the location on our indian map so this is the territory of union territory of ladakh where this is approx location of sokar lake yes guys
राइट सो विच इज इन लद्दाख यूनियन टेरिटरी सोकार लेक Yes, this is also another mapping representation of Sokar Lake. Yes, this is satellite image. See, friends, this is Sokar Lake. Now you can understand, and definitely in this lecture we will see. the features of this wetland and sokar lake so this is the sokar lake and this is complete area is sokar wetland complex including starts up so as well yes which is in the union territory of ladakh so this is the sokar wetland complex yes see the satellite images again this is sokar lake yes friends right so this is high altitude wetland complex found at more than 4500 meters above sea level in changtang region of ladakh yes so on the highest sea level we can say that is 45 meters above sea level in the ladakh region yes this is high altitude wetland complex so the complex includes two connected lakes the fresh water starts with so and the larger hyperline sokar lake yes so it presents a notable example of two such lakes existing in close proximity yes so this is the notable example of wetland complex where hyperline and fresh water lake existing nearby places and in close proximity yes now see the name sokar refers to the white salt efflorescence on the margins of lake caused by the evaporation of the saline waters yes so the name of sokar refers to the white salt fluorescence on the margins of the lake and this fluorescence of white salt due to the evaporation of the saline waters yes as we we are studying the concept of evaporation of the saline waters in geography as well yes so basically this wetland complex is at high altitude in the changtang region of ladakh now after that we'll see the climate local climate in this locality yes so the local climate is arid and glacier melt water is primarily water resource for the lakes so the climate in this area is arid type of climate and the glacier melt water is the primary water resource for the lakes yes and the lakes and particular the presence of fresh water attract biodiversity 
in a biologically spare region. Yes, so the lakes in this particular presence of fresh water attract diversity in biologically spare region. Yes, so here we can say flora and fauna is occurred due to this fresh water presence in the locality. Right. So the inhabitant the site are numerous threatened species including endangered sacred falcon, Asiatic wild dog or dole and vulnerable snow leopard. Yes, snow leopard is also inhabiting in this site. Yes, so the site also acts as an important stopover ground for migratory birds along the Central Asian flyway and is one of the most important breeding areas in India for the black necked crane. Yes, so this is rich in flora and fauna. Yes, so in this wetland complex, number of threatened species are living like endangered sacred falcon. Yes, scientific name is Falco Cherik. Then Asiatic wild dog or dole, scientific name is Kion Alpinis Laniger and the vulnerable snow leopard which is Panthera ansia. Yes. And if we are talking about the migratory birds, so this place attracts migratory birds from Central Asian locality, right? And this is also important breeding areas in India for the black necked crane. So scientific name is Grus nigricollis. Yes. So the smallest of three high altitude lakes of Ladakh, the remote Sokar Lake lies about 50 km from So Moriri, one of the famous lake in Ladakh region. So Moriri. So this Sokar Lake complex or Sokar wetland complex is around 50 km from this So Moriri Lake. Yes. Now, this Sokar Lake is also called as White Lake due to the white salt content in the water deposits on its shore and it leaves visitors in awe of its beauty. Yes, number of visitors visiting this Sokar Lake as well. So, in feats, if we measure the height from the sea level, it approx 15200 feet and is bordered by lofty mountains that are home to elusive snow leopard yes as we have seen flora and fauna of this sokar lake locality so as we have discussed the area surrounding the lake is riff with wildlife and flora and it also makes for an important point for bird watchers especially during migration season when several species come here to lay their eggs including the black necked cranes right now if we are talking about human existence or activities the nomadic settlements of QJ and Gerson are guardians of the lake and its surrounding area. So there are nomadic settlements of Thugje and Gerson are guarding the 
lake and its surrounding area. So, if will plan to visit this locality, then the ideal time to visit is between the months of May and August. Yes, number of people are planning to visit Leh Ladakh. So, as usual, the ideal time to visit is May to August. So, when next time you will plan for trip Leh and Ladakh, please include this Sokar Lake Complex, Wetland Complex in your trip list. Yes, friends. Now, we'll see the details of this Sokar Wetland Complex and Sokar Lake. So basically the site was in news due to this site announced as a 42nd Ramsar site. Yes. Forty second Ramsar site of India. Right now. And earlier that if we are talking about in our country, the Lona Lake in Maharashtra, Sur Sarovar in Agra, and Kabartal in Bihar's Begusarai district were ad added to the Ramsar sites. So this Sokar Wet Land Complex is also designated as a Ramsar site. Now we'll see the features of Sokar Basin. Yes, as I told you, it's a high altitude wetland complex located in the UT of Ladakh. So basically the one line meaning of Sokar which means white lake. Yes. Sokar means white lake. So the white color is because of the white salt fluorescence found on the margins due to the evaporation of highly saline water and it consists of two principal water bodies like as I introduced you the starts to so so it is a fresh water lake about 438 hectares to the south and soka lake yes starts to so is also in the soka wetland complex now the hypersaline lake of 1800 hectares to north situated in the Thang, Chang Thang region of Ladakh is Sokar Lake. Yes. So these are the few details of Sokar Basin and it is an A1 category important bird area IBA as per BirdLife International and case tagging site in the Central Asian Flyway. Yes, as per the BirdLife International, this is A1 category for Important Bird Area, IBA. So, this site is known or thought regularly to hold significant number of a globally threatened species categorized by the ICUN Red List as critically endangered. and vulnerable. So here we can see the globally threatened species occurred in this locality because of this rich features of the area. Right. So the Central Asian Flyway which is known as CAF 
it covers a large continental area of U Eurasia between the Arctic and Indian Oceans and the associate islands chains. So the Central Asian flyway covers a large continental area of Eurasia between the Arctic and Indian Oceans and the associate with island chains. Yes friends, so this Lokar wetland complex is the home for number of threatened species, globally threatened species. Right. So it comprises several important migration routes for water birds and most of which extend from the northernmost breeding grounds in the Russian Federation, Siberia to the southernmost non-breeding wintering grounds in West and South Asia. Yes, so the water birds are migrating from the northern west breeding grounds like Siberia to the southernmost part in West and South Asia. Yes, next feature is friends, it covers at least 279 populations of 182 migratory water bird species, including 29 globally threatened species. Yes. Now, it serves as breeding areas for many species. Some important species are, as we already talked about black neck crane along with this great crested grape bar headed geese ready shell duck brown headed gull and laser sand plover yes so these are the important species found in this area black necked crane, great crested grip, bar headed geese, ready shell duck, brown headed gull and laces and plower. Yes friends. Now after all this, the Sokar wetland is designated as a Ramsar site. Now we'll see what is wetland. Yes, so according to the Ramsar Convention, wetlands are areas of marsh, fen, peatland or water, whether natural or artificial, permanent or temporary, with water that is static or flowing, fresh, brackish or salt, including areas of marine water, the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters. Yes, these are the criteria for the wetlands as per the Ramsar Convention. So, the wetlands are areas of marsh, fen, peatland or water, whether natural or artificial, either permanent or temporary with water that is static or flowing, fresh, brackish or salt, including areas of marine water, the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters. Yes, now wetland take many forms including if we are talking about the wetland after the criteria to be known as wetland then we'll see various forms like coastal wetlands. So what is mean by coastal wetlands? Yes, the name itself indicating 
the type of wetland so these coastal wetlands are found in the areas between land and open sea yes between the land and open sea that are not influenced by rivers such as shorelines beaches mangroves and coral reefs so a good example is the mangrove swamps found in sheltered tropical coastal areas so the area or wetland found in the areas of or areas between land and open sea which known as coastal wastelands then shallow lakes and ponds yes these wetlands are areas of permanent or semi permanent water with little flow and they include vernal ponds spring pools salt lakes and volcanic crater lakes yes then marshes so these are periodically saturated flooded or ponded with water and characterized by herbaceous vegetation herbaceous vegetation adapted to wet soil conditions yes next wetland type is marshes so these are periodically saturated flooded or ponded with water and characterized by herbaceous vegetation Ad adapted to wet soil conditions so marshes are further characterized as tidal marshes and not tidal and tidal marshes and non tidal marshes yes then swamps next type of wetland is the swamps so these are fed primarily by the surface water inputs and are dominated by trees shrubs and swamps occur in either fresh water or salt water flood plains yes then bogs so bogs are waterlogged peatlands in old lake basins or depressions in the landscape so almost all water in bogs comes from rainfall and then estuaries yes we are also studying these terms in geography as well so this is the recap for that ge geographical terms so estuaries so the area where rivers meet the sea and water changes from fresh to salt can offer an extremely rich mix of biodiversity so these wetlands include deltas tidal mud flats and salt marshes yes now so according to ramsar convention wetland is the area or areas of marsh fen peatland or water so whether natural or artificial permanent or temporary with water that static or flowing yes fresh brackish or salt including areas of marine water the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters yes
Now, weight lands forms we have covered like coastal wetlands, shallow lakes and ponds, marshes, swamps, bogs and estuaries. Yes. So, after that, we will see the importance of wetland. Yes, so here is one doubt of one of the candidate regarding fen. So, friends, fen means frequently flooded area of land. Yes. So, which is frequently flooded area of land is known as fen. Now, we'll see importance of wetland. So, wetlands are highly productive ecosystems that provide the world with nearly two-thirds of its fish harvest. Yes. And wetlands play an integral role in the ecology of the watershed. Yes. Wetlands are highly productive ecosystem which provides the world with nearly two thirds of its fish harvest and wetlands play an integral role in the ecology of the watershed. Yes, the combination of shallow water, high levels of nutrients is ideal for the development of organism that form the base of the food web, food web and feed many species of fish, amphibians, shellfish and insects. Yes. Right. Now, wetlands, microbes, plants and wildlife are part of a global cycle. Cycles for water, nitrogen and sulfur. Yes, so wetlands, microbes, plants and wildlife are part of global cycles for water, nitrogen and sulfur. So the wetlands store carbon within their plant communities and soil instead of releasing it to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Yes, so these area that is wetland, wetlands store carbon within their plant communities and soil instead of releasing it to the atmosphere as a carbon dioxide. So this is the feature which will help to maintain clean environment. Yes, so this is ecological. ecological feature consists or related with the wetlands. Now, wetlands function as natural barriers that trap and slowly release surface water, rain, snow melt, groundwater and flood waters. So these are function the functions as a natural barriers. Yes, wetland vegetation also slow the speed of flood waters, lowering flood heights and reduces soil erosion. Yes. So the slow speed of flood waters, lowering flood heights and reduces soil erosion. And Wetlands are critical to human and planet life. More than 1 billion people depend on them for living and 40% of world species live and breathe in wetlands. 
yes so these are the importance or important feature of wetlands then wetlands are a vital source for food raw materials genetic resources for medicines and hydropower yes in the world some wetlands are used for hydropower projects as well then these are the source for the food raw materials genetic resources for medicines yes they play an important role in transport tourism and the cultural and spiritual well-being of people wetlands provide habitat for animals and plants and many contain a wide diversity of life supporting plants and animals that are found now no nowhere else yes so these are the places where endangered wildlife is occurred due to their available source for the food and needs of the wildlife arena yes so many wetlands are areas of natural beauty and promote tourism and many are important to ab original people yes so wetland are also the famous tourist places in the world due to the beauty of nature number of visitors attract to the wetland complexes yes again the wetlands also provide important benefits for industry for example form of nurseries for fish and other fresh water and marine life or marine life and are critical to commercial and recreational recreational fishing industries so basically the important benefit for industry like form nurseries for fish and other fresh water marine life yes yes so these are the importance of wetland and after that we'll see the threats to wetlands area yes now we'll see threats to wetland areas yes urbanization yes friends so wetlands near urban centers are under increasing development pressure from residential industrial and commercial facilities or industrial and commercial activities like infrastructure and developmental projects and urban wetlands are essential for preserving public water supplies yes so now we are studying threats to wetlands after that agriculture yes guys this is also threat to wetlands as vast stretches of wetland have been converted to paddy fields construction of large number of reservoirs canals and dams to provide irrigation significantly altered the hydrology of the associate wetlands as we know we hum uh, like human beings or we people just converting these natural wetlands into the agriculture agriculture fields and after that significantly we are using this agriculture lands to 
other industrial activity so agriculture in this area is also threats to wetlands yes after the urbanization and agriculture pollution is also threat to wetlands now we'll see how pollution will harm the wetlands yes so wetlands act as a natural water filters however they can only clean up the fertilizer fertilizers and pesticides from agriculture runoff but not mercury from industrial source and other types of pollution yes these are the natural naturally they are working as water filters in which they can clean up only fertilizers and pesticides from agriculture runoff but not mercury from industrial sources and other types of pollution yes there is growing concern about the effect of industrial pollution and drinking water supplies and the biological diversity of wetlands yes so the growing concern about the effect of industrial pollution on drinking water supplies and the biological diversity of wetlands so this industrial pollution will affect the drinking water supplies from wetlands and also they will harm this biological diversity of wetland now after that climate change is also threat to wetland complexes now as we know the increasing air temperature shifts in precipitation increased frequency of storms droughts and floods then increase atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration co2 concentration and sea level rise could also affect wetlands yes we can say global warming and climate change is also one of the factor who is threatening to the wetland areas in the world yes then dragging yes dragging draining introduce species saline salinization salinization yes now dragging the removal of material from wetland or river bed so dragging of streams lowers the surrounding water table and dries up adjacent to wetland so for commercial activities or industrial activities human being conducting dragging in or nearby the areas of wetland then in which dragging of streams lowers the surrounding water table and dries dries up adjacent wetlands so ulti ultimately it harms wetland and their habitat yes dragging then draining water is draining from wetlands by cutting ditches into the ground which collect and transport water out of the wetland so the lowers than the water table and dries out the wetland due to draining yes then introduced species indian wetlands are threatened by exotic introduced plant species such as water hyacinth and salvinia they clog waterways and compete with native vegetation yes 
So the Indian wetlands are threatened by exotic introduced plant species like water hyacinth and salvinia and they clog waterways and compete with native vegetation. Salinization that is over withdrawal of groundwater has led to the salinization in that area. Yes. So these are the threats to wetlands. Yes, friends. After this, we'll see the Ramsar site. So, Ramsar Convention on Wetlands is intergovernmental treaty adopted in 1971. Now, we'll see what is mean by Ramsar site or Ramsar Convention. So, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands is an intergovernmental treaty adopted in 1971 in the Iranian city of Ramsar. So, due to this convention is in the city of Ramsar. That's why the concept of Ramsar site is introduced. Yes, so Ramsar is the city, Iranian city on the south southern shore of the Cap sea, Caspian Sea. So Ramsar is the Iranian city on the southern shore of the Caspian Sea. Yes, it came into force for India on 1st February 1982. Ramsar site came into force for India on 1st February 1982. Yes, those wetlands which are international importance are declared as Ramsar sites. Those wetlands which are of international importance are declared as Ramsar sites. So the convention's mission is the conservation and wise use of wetlands. So, the local and national actions, you, yes, and international cooperation as a contribution towards achieving sustainable development throughout the world. Yes. So, this Ramsar Convention's mission is the conservation and wise use of all wet, uh, wetland through local and national actions and international cooperation as a contribution towards achieving sustainable development goal yes throughout the world now the montrix record is register of wetland sites on the list of wetland of international importance where changes in ecological character have occurred yes friends you can remember what is mean by Montrex record. So this is register of wetland sites on the list of wetlands of international importance where changes in ecological character have occurred. So are occurring or are likely to occur as a result of technological development, pollution and other human interference. So this Montrix record is talking about a register of wetland sites of international importance where ecological character changes have occurred or likely to occur as a result technological developments, pollution or other human interference. Yes, it is maintained as part of the Ramsar list. Yes. 
at present two wetlands of india are in montrex record yes in the india's context we should know the two wetlands in india are in montrex record these are kevla devan national park in rajasthan and loktik lake in manipur yes these two wetlands of india are in montrex record you have to just remember this fact for the upcoming examinations yes friends then let us update about indian ramsar sites as we have started sokar wetland complex is also designated as ram ramsar site in india now we'll see let us update about indian ramsar sites yes now recently 2nd february 2021 marked the 50th anniversary of the ramsar convention so the day which is also celebrated as a world wetlands day yes 2nd february 2021 is also celebrated as world wetlands day now india on this occasion established center for wetland conservation and management which is the first in the country yes on the occasion of world wetlands day we established center for wetland conservation and management yes so we established first center for wetland conservation and management so it is set up under the ministry of environment forest and climate change at the national center for sustainable coastal management chennai yes center for wetland conservation and management is set up under the ministry of environment forest and climate change and this is located or set up at the national center for sustainable coastal management in chennai yes after that sambal lake had been in the news for its deter deterioration over salt mining so sambal lake is the is a ramsar site in india yes these are the current relevance related with the ramsar site now yes now we'll study ramsar sites in india so if we are talking about latest addition so in this in recently december 2020 the sokar wetland complex yes our today's topic that is sokar wetland complex was added to the list of ramsar sites in india so this includes high altitude wetland complex of two connected lakes starts to so and sokar in ladakh yes before that in november 2020 lonar lake situated in maharashtra added to the ramsar sites in india yes during that period only sur sarovar also known as kitham lake located at agra in uttar pradesh also designated as ramsar sites in india yes then asan barrage of uttarakhand also 
added into the Ramsar sites in India. Before that, in July 2020, Kanwar Lake or Kabul Tal, situated in Bihar, is also designated Ramsar sites in India. Yes, Kanwal Lake or Kabalta. Then, before that, in February 2020, Sundarban Reserve Forest, that is Sundarban Wetlands, also added into the Ramsar sites in India. Yes, now, Yerwadi in Manipur is eyed as a potential Ramsar site. Yes. Yerwadi in Manipur. Yes. Now we'll see few features of the Ramsar sites in India. Like Sundarbans is the largest Ramsar site of India. Uttar Pradesh has the most number of Ramsar sites in our country. So almost it has eight Indian wetlands. Then Renuka wetland in Himachal is the smallest wetland of India. Renuka wetland. Yes. Then Ramsar sites are one of the major projected areas in the world and there are currently over 2400 Ramsar sites in the world covering an area of 2.5 million square kilometers. Yes, world's first Ramsar site was identified in 1974. Yes, the Ramsar Convention was took place in 1971 and after that, in 1974, world's first Ram Ramsar site was identified, which was the Kubok Peninsula, Peninsula in Australia. Yes. Kubok Peninsula in Australia. Then the United Kingdom has the world's largest number of Ramsar sites, that is 175 Ramsar sites in the United Kingdom. Then February 2 is celebrated as International Wetlands Day. Yes. The largest sites are Nigri Tumba, Mendo in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo and Queen Maud Gulf in Canada. Yes, the largest site, Ramsar sites are Giri, Nigri, Tumba, Mendo in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Queen Maud Gulf in Canada. So these sites, these sites each cover over 60,000 square kilometers. Yes, Nikri Tumba, Mandong and Queen Maud Gulf. These are situated in Democratic Republic of Congo and Canada respectively. Yes. After that, we'll see. Bolivia has the largest area with 1,48,000 square kilometer under Ramsar port protection. And the Ramsar Convention works with the collaboration of the following organization. Yes. The Ramsar Convention works with the collaboration of the following organizations where International Union for Conservation of Nature, that is IUCN, BirdLife International, International Water Management Institute, IWMI, Wetland International, Wetlands International, Wild Four and Wetland Trust WWT and WWF International. Yes. 
So, this Ramsar Convention works with the collaboration with these organizations. Now, we'll see new Ramsar sites in India through the mapical representation. Yes, this is earlier added as a new Ramsar sites. So, Ramsar sites in India like Punjab, Nangal Wildlife Sanctuary, Keshofir Wetland, that is Gurudaspur Bird Sanctuary, Bias Wetland Site, Sarsai Nawazil, Nawab Ganj Bird Sanctuary, Samaspur Bird Sanctuary, Sandhi Bird Sanctuary, Parvati Agra Bird Sanctuary and these are added into the Ramsar site and these places are in Uttar Pradesh and from Maharashtra, Nandur Madhyameshwar Bird Sanctuary is also added into the Ramsar sites in India. Yes, friends, this is the updated list of all Ramsar sites in our country and this is representation through maps. Yes. Yes, now just have a look on Sokar Lake, the beauty of nature and ecologically sensitive zone as well which is designated as, as Ramsar site in our country. So just have a look what we have covered today. Yes friends. Now in today's session we have started with the Soka Lake in which we have studied or we covered the location through map of Soka Lake then yes this is the Sokar wait, Sokar wetland complex through satellite view. Then we have studied about introductory information related with the Sokar Lake and Sokar wetland complex. Yes. So this wetland complex includes two connected lakes that is Starscook So which is the <coughs> freshwater lake and Sokan Lake that is hypersaline in nature. So basically Sokar refers to the white salt. The name refers to the white salt. The climate in this area is arid. Glacier melt water is the primary water source for the lakes. Yes. This famous now this famous Ramsar site which is located near the remote Yes, this remote Sokar Lake lies about 50 km from Somoriri. Yes, recently this Sokar wetland complex designated as Ramsar site in India. Then we have covered Sokar Basin features. Yes, 
Then we have covered some important species like the black necked crane, great crested grib, bar headed geese, ruddy shedlock, brown headed gull, and laser sand plover. Yes, then we have studied what is mean by wetland and forms of wetlands. Then importance of wetlands in ecological system. Then we covered threats to wetlands. Yes. And then we have studied about Ramses site. Yes, then Montrix record. And we have two wetlands listed in Montrix record that is Kevla Dev National Park, Rajasthan, and Loktak Lake, Manipur. Yes, then World Wetland Day and we have established first center for wetland conservation and management at Chennai. Then we have studied few Ramsar sites that is latest added Ramsar site in India. Then some information related with the Ramsar sites in India and then we have studied the Ramsar Convention and the related organizations. They have worked together for the conservation of ecology and promote sustainable development in the world. Yes. So here we have completed today's topic Sokar Lake with all aspects and dimensions important for the examination purpose. Yes, once again just have a look on the beauty of nature which is placed in the Union Territory of Ladakh Sokar Wetland Complex. Yes. Now friends, we are just winding up this session and do not forget to attend Unacademy Combat to tomorrow in the morning 11 o'clock by using code RBI Life and you can win amazing prizes like complimentary Unacademy Plus subscription and many more prizes. Yes friends. You can join our telegram group for daily updates regarding your preparation. And do not forget to use code RBI Life to get 10% discount in the subscriptions. So please like, share, and subscribe on Academy videos and on Academy channels. And also hit the bell icon for the regular notification about our lectures. So friends, keep studying, keep learning. See you in the next lecture. All the best. Thank you.